Okay, folks, on to perhaps the most exciting, exciting, exciting part of the course. Um, we had said that if you have a magnetic field uh, pointing into the board like this, and uh, you have some sort of uh, some sort of conducting loop uh, here, then then if that magnetic field is increasing as a function of time, uh, you would see uh, by Faraday's law and Nelson's law, you would see an induced current, okay? That, well, so what we have now is this field is increasing in the forward direction. The flux in this conducting loop is increasing in the forward direction. And what you're gonna have is a, an induced current that will try to oppose that change. So we're gonna have an induced, uh, induced magnetic field uh, that is going to uh, point this way, right? To oppose the change. And that has to come from, you know, that has to come from uh, uh, a current, an induced current that must be flowing this way, okay? But keep in mind that the only reason you have an induced current flowing this way is because it's an electric field, induced electric field. Uh, pointing this way, E induced, right? And your EMF across the loop is the integral of your E dot DL, and we get the following. So what this is telling us, basically, is that, you know, it's not that you have field because you have current. You have current because you have field. And now even if you didn't have this loop, they say all the loop is doing is picking up the field. The field is moving the charges around so you have current. Moving electrons this way, a positive charge carriers this way. But the idea now is that the field is there, but the current loop, like the conducting loop, just simply picks up that field. So we have now that the integral of E dot dL is equal to minus D by dt double integral over the surface of B dot ds, okay? And this is the surface of the, uh, you know, the surface through which the, uh, uh, the, the, the magnetic field goes, okay? Uh, talking about the flux, okay? Now, come Maxwell, and this is really cool. Uh, he kind of said, uh, you know, my take on it is that he kind of said it wasn't fair for, you know, I mean, notice, notice something interesting, peculiar, in the electric fields that you've seen so far up to induction are come from things that, you know, are monopolar in nature. You have a point charge, field goes this way. You have a plane, field goes that way. You have, uh, you have to establish two monopoles to have a dipolar field, but this field goes around in circles, right? Magnetic fields, a uh, quintessential source of a magnetic field is a, is, a, is a current loop, and the magnetic field goes like this around it, dipolar. Electric fields are, in that regard, also dipolar, like magnetic fields. Like they go like, you know, it's like a, it has dipolar, dipolar kind of uh, uh, behavior to it, right? So uh, induced electric fields have this property that they behave like magnetic fields, right? So uh, there is a lot of underlying, uh, underlying, uh, uh, underlying um, physics in there, in that electric and magnetic fields are of the same nature, same phenomenon, right? So uh, we talked about that earlier in class. Uh, look into, uh, yeah, look into this more on your own. It's, it's really nifty. Uh, so Maxwell then came and said, you know, uh, not exactly like this, but he said kind of it's not fair. So if I have an electric field now, uh, pointing, just like magnetic fields create electric fields, right? So you have a magnetic field creating an electric field. You said now if I have a, an electric field pointing into the board, and the electric field uh, increases in time, okay? So by the same token, I can go around, and let's say I have a, a given loop here, right? I say that now I have a, a, a magnetic field created, right? Uh, there is more to it than there's the Fermi's argument, uh, but there is a magnetic field created this way, okay? Now, you see how the electric field is, acts in such a way so as to create a magnetic field that opposes the magnetic field. That is the exact opposite over there. And what you have here is this is the second part of Ampere's law, okay? So what he said now was that the integral of B dot DL around the closed loop has a, another component to it, and that is epsilon naught 
d by dt of double integral e dot ds uh, um, uh, and on the surface. This is the second part of Ampere's law. The first part you know as, uh, you know, uh, mu naught double integral uh, JDS. So this is talking about the displacement current now, and this is uh, Maxwell's major contribution to uh, complete Maxwell's equations. The other one that we haven't talked about is Gauss's law for magnetism. Please look that up. Integral of B dot DS is equal to uh, is equal to uh, uh, zero. So uh, Amper's law now has this other other part to it. So this is part two, okay, that needs to be added in there. So you have now really integral of b dot dl, okay, equal to um, u naught double integral of j dot ds plus epsilon naught d by dt of double integral e dot ds uh, surface. Okay, uh, this is really, really nifty part. It's not really part of the course, but now you're able to look at Maxwell's equations in uh, in their fullness. Okay, so uh, this is the end of this part. We're gonna pause and uh, uh, shoot one more thing at you, maybe. <laughs>